morning everyone I have a uh, some someone's doing lawn maintenance in the background so I apologize for that um, this video is long overdue so where we left off on the second video for my YouTube was me explaining that um, you know I've always been around exotics I raised my children around them all that sort of thing and I promised you an explanation as to why I speak so many languages because I get that question quite a bit but before I could ever make that video life actually happened and um, there was a Texas ice storm uh, and my 80 year old father actually slipped on the ice and was in very critical condition so of course that took me home and all YouTube everything just flew out the window and um, my family was my priority. And uh, it was very touch and go. We almost lost my dad. He had a traumatic brain injury. We are a very stereotypical Italian family. Um, when my father came to America back in the 70s, he was a rock mason. So he has worked with rock and brick and concrete and granite and all those things his entire life. And so being a rock mason, he made all these beautiful landscape walls and you know just all this elaborate rock work around his home and when he slipped on the house uh, on the sidewalk at the house during the ice storm he ended up hitting his head on one of those very beautiful little landscape trim walls that he had built himself and um, being 80 it was very detrimental to his health so it's a very scary situation for us all and uh now, once he recovered from that sufficiently, you know, he was doing like home therapy uh, and that sort of thing because, um, I mean, I don't want to get into the details of it, but it causes like grand mal seizures and then the grand mal seizures were so severe that he ended up with what's called Tot syndrome, which is a temporary paralysis on the side of the brain that was impacted by the blood on the brain from the traumatic uh, brain injury. So, uh, you know, he's had to do in-home therapy uh, and all that sort of thing once he was discharged from a rehabilitation facility. And my brothers uh, are there with my mother and sister taking care of him and helping him. And he's much, much improved. So we're very grateful for that. Thank you, Lord. And um, anyways, that's what took me away from pro providing you guys with the third video uh, seemingly months ago. Now. Okay, so let's get into this. So obviously my parents are Italian immigrants. So um, that's why I speak Italian. Now they're from Naples and I speak Napolitan, which is the Neapolitan dialect, right? And that was my first language and what I grew up speaking. Of course, I grew up in America. So English, duh, I'm proficient in English. Um, and I grew up in Texas because I was, although I was born in New York, we, uh, the family moved to Texas when I was a wee little one. And that's where I spent the bulk of my childhood. My very first, well, my very first job was at Dillo Skate Park downtown in Austin, Texas. When I was 13, I ran the cash register, highly illegal, but who gave a crap? I was having a great time and I was at the skate park, right? So it was great. And um, by skate, I mean skateboard, right? They had like the half pikes and all that stuff. And so it was fun. But then after that, when we moved just a little bit further north uh, into the suburbs outside of the city, I ended up working at a Mexican restaurant. At the time it was called La Fiesta and no one spoke English. So I was like, man, I need to learn Spanish. I was 14, uh, fibbed on that application. And I did learn Spanish, just working at the restaurant and being around the Spanish speakers. So I have an inclination for languages and uh, I picked up Spanish uh, and I was very thrilled with that. And then I ended up marrying my high school sweetheart who was uh, Brazilian. So him being Brazilian, I was like, hey, you guys, you know, to my in-laws at the time, I was like, don't speak to me in English, talk to me in Portuguese. And you know, I wanna like master that language because I already had Spanish and Italian. So Portuguese was next on my list. And they ad they did as I requested and only spoke to me in Portuguese. And soon enough, I was fluent in Portuguese. Now, back in the day, I did actually study, uh, you know, in school, French. <clears throat> it's the only language I've actually ever studied, minus like the Italian lessons my dad would give me or any self-taught stuff. Because I do read and write in all of them. 
not super proficient, but my Spanish and Portuguese, because I use it at work in my professional career and have for the last 11 plus years, um, I read and write even better. In Italian, because I'm so conscientious, like I don't want to botch it, um, I take the time and the effort to make sure I'm, you know, conjugating verbs correctly and that sort of thing and, and not misspelling words. So it takes me a little bit longer in Italian because I don't use it as frequently in the written form. Now, when I talk to my mom every day, we're speaking Italian. So French is my weakest language because I just lack the practice. You know, with the Brazilian Portuguese and the Spanish, I can hop on a work call, I actually speak Spanish about 12 hours hours a week on conference calls for work it you know with uh my partners in latin america so and i know like all these crazy logistics terms and all this stuff that i i don't know that stuff in italian because i haven't been exposed to it uh in italian at that level you know like um i can't even think of examples right now but you know how each like line of work has its own lingo and verbiage and that sort of thing. And, and so I do know that in Brazilian Portuguese and in Spanish, but not in Italian. Saying all of that, I raised my children, my two oldest daughters for the most part in Oregon. So they were not close to, physically close to my mom and dad, right? We were, we were in Oregon and well, actually all four of their grandparents, the Brazilian grandparents, as well as my parents, the Italian grandparents, were in Texas. So my children understand Italian and Portuguese and Spanish, but they don't speak it proficiently, um, any of them. Um, now, all of them have interests in, the, in languages. My oldest daughter actually studied French for six years and she studied Italian. Um, and, and by that I mean, of course, in, in college and in high school and that sort of thing. And then my middle daughter, is almost obsessed with languages and really like worked hard to be like a polyglot. So her Brazilian Portuguese, her Spanish, her Italian are really, really strong. And even more so than that, that crazy child actually studied Chinese, Korean, and Japanese. So she's in college right now and she also did some self-taught, but she actually took courses and learned the basics. And um, she is she does really well and she kind of blows my mind so she's she is she even studied some german like she's got this really strong repertoire of languages like she could pretty much travel anywhere and get by somehow at any rate um that is the background as to why we speak so many languages um my youngest daughter we had moved back to texas when she was a baby so at that point, she was like engrossed in the Italian and the Brazilian uh, Portuguese language speaking and cultures, uh, more so than my older two were. So she actually has a really good ear for both of them. And to be honest, she speaks it fairly well. Like she's really proud of herself. So um, we are in South Florida, which is a Latin American melting pot. And we love it here. It's such a cultured area. I mean, there's people from all over the world. There's an Italian community. There's, you know, Latin Americans. Um, we live in an area that's very heavy uh, Brazilian, Portuguese um, speakers. And so she is exposed to that. She goes to school with these students. She's like half Brazilian um, and not a fluent speaker, although she understands it. At any rate, so she has uh, been exposed to a lot of the Latin American culture here in South Florida, which we love. The culture here is so diverse. There's communities, just full communities. Um, there's Italian communities, Brazilian, uh, Portuguese speaking communities, and then Latin American, of course, there's like so many Spanish speakers. Um, so we really love the rich, rich cultural diversity here. Um, it's pretty spectacular. So we are lovers of of all cultures and all people, just like we are of animals. So um, we, you know, we enjoy South Florida and it's given my girls a lot of opportunity to develop their languages, use them in actual scenarios at work, at school and everything else. So it's been a real blessing and we love it here.